In this video, we're going to take a closer look at interpreting conclusions of hypothesis tests. So remember, when we are interpreting a conclusion, we are doing so based on either the rejection region or the p-value. So in this video, I'm going to focus on the p-value. So we're going to include the three parts that we spoke of previously. Our conclusion to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis, the data that led to the conclusion, and then what does that mean in context? So the biggest issue I have students make is right here. They don't really get what it means. So remember, what it means has everything to do with our hypotheses. So let's take a look at this question. We actually have already looked at this question and created these hypotheses in our last video. So we're looking at spending 10 hours a week doing coursework and we're concerned that students are being required to spend more than 10 hours per week. So here's our two hypotheses. And let's say we ended up, and again, I've skipped over all of the fun calculations. Let's say I have a p-value then of 0 0.014 and we are looking at a 5% level of significance, which means alpha is 0 0.05. So before we go to the next slide that has obviously the conclusion on it, let's take a look at what we should be looking at. We have a p-value of 0 0.014, which is less than alpha of 0 0.05. Therefore, I should be rejecting the null hypothesis. What does that mean? That means I have evidence to say that this is not true. And therefore, I have evidence to support, I have sufficient evidence to support the null hypothesis. So without writing it out, the basics are, I just found enough information to say, it's probably not true that students are spending 10 hours per week studying. It's probably true because I have sufficient evidence to say so, that students are spending more than 10 hours per week studying. So let's take a look at the full conclusion. With a p-value of 0 0.014, which is less than alpha of 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis. We always have evidence to either support or not enough evidence to support the alternative. So we're always going to be talking about this, whether we're rejecting or failing to reject, we always talk about the alternative when we are writing our conclusion. So in this case, because we reject the null, we're saying we have enough evidence to support that students study more than 10 hours per week on average, which is just what this says in words. Let's take a look at another. We're looking at the effects of television viewing on children, hot topic always. Um, people believe that children watch a mean of four hours of television per night, and Kiko believes that that is not the case in her neighborhood. So she performs a hypothesis test with a significance level of alpha of 0.1. And of course, these would be our hypotheses. Equal to four, not equal to four, because she believes that it's not this case. We do the test and end up with a p-value of 0.123. Write and interpret your conclusion. So before you move on, if you would just pause for a moment and see if you can come up with what you believe is the correct conclusion. So again, in writing a full conclusion with three parts, the first thing that we take a look at is what is the conclusion? So we have to look at does p, is p less than alpha or is p greater than alpha? So looking at our data here, we have obviously that p, 0.123, is greater than alpha. Therefore, we are going to fail to reject the null. So the two parts that we start with are the data that supports it. So with p of 0.123 greater than alpha, which is 0.1, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then of course, the most important part, what does that mean? And in this case, it means we have insufficient evidence to say that this is true. And again, the alternative says we have insufficient evidence to support that children in the neighborhood watch more or less than four hours of TV per night. Again, that is, or different than four hours of sleep, uh, four hours of TV per night. 
Coming up next, we're going to take a look at errors in hypothesis testing.